What's going on, family? Thank y'all for joining me on another episode of Bandit Voices. Joining me today, man, is a good brother right here, man. Good friend of mine. Throwback, man. Way back. Way back, man. Brother Ro, Mr. Ro, Roosevelt. <laughs> the East know him as Micey. <laughs> What's going on, man? How you been, man? Man, man thanks so excellent for me right now. You know, I'm blessed. I'm grateful for a brother like yourself who take the time to create a platform by which we can um, let our voices be heard, you know? mm -hmm. and I'm so humble for this, you know what I'm saying? Man, you, you the man, man, and I, I, I appreciate you taking time out your busy schedule to, uh, you know, to, to, this to take a little ride with me and, you know, chop it up, man. Well, uh, this shirt, this shirt said, man. Can I own, own ain't gangsta. gangsta. That's and the that's, movement right now. You know, man, um, that's, that gotta be the the most positive movement that's going right now. Yes, because right now, the that, uh, media, the rap industry, the movie industry have promoted murder as a accepted reality. You know what I'm saying? Like a video it, game, like, yes. you, like you come back tomorrow or something, huh? Programming the generations to not value life by giving them games that take life in what you call an artificial manner. But then the attitude that you took from the game is carried into the child's life of his attitude, but how he walked the street every day. Mm -hmm. You know, so our youngsters are being programmed for that, programmed to, to to do heinous crimes, you know. And if we don't Don't come, expect to live past 25, no, 21. To them, that that that's a trophy. And at one time I bought into that concept because you know a lot of people told me I wouldn't make it past 25. And the lifestyle I was living at that time was promising that I wouldn't make it past 25. Mm -hmm. You know, so two years before my 25th birthday, you know, 1993, I met a man that altered my life. You know, I met Minister Farrakhan, and from that point, he gave me some valuable jewels mm -hmm. and gave me the opportunity to reform myself. You know, he got a course that I advise every human being to take. It's called self improvement the basis for community development. And if you take this particular self-improvement course, it'll give you an opportunity to go within yourself. You know what I'm saying? The community we live in is a reflection of every human being's value of how they conduct themselves. So for me to improve myself first and then advocate to the community for improvement mean I had to first improve me because I'm a part of that actual community. Let me tell you something. I don't know nothing about the program, but I know it's real because I know you from way back. And you's a bad man. Oh man. <laughs> you's a bad man. Say, and to see you now, to see you now, it's like well, that's whatever the, you went through. Brother, <laughs> it is the most profound knowledge ever to be given to humanity. If you're not studying Anubu Elijah Muhammad, if you're not studying Minister Farrakhan, if you're not trying to find out who this man named Master Farad Muhammad is, then you're doing yourself a great injustice because he came to America to give us a body of knowledge that will reform black people first. Mm -hmm. So whatever the knowledge is this man is giving to us, if it is taking the worst that this society is considering the worst, worst. black people, right? Exactly. If this body of knowledge can reform us by just the acceptance or hearing of it, it has to be reviewed, it has to be studied. You know, I didn't have to go to prison to, to make the changes I made by Allah's permission. It was me hearing Minister Farrakhan and me being a hundred with life at that time. Meaning, when I was in the street, I was a hundred. You know what I'm saying? If I was out there, I was out there. You know what I'm saying? You play with me, it is what it is. You're going to get a hundred percent of what you was asking for. So, that was the life I gave a hundred to. Exactly. So, when I got the opportunity to be given the knowledge of God and the opportunity to be requested to work on God's behalf, I promise that I will give 100 to that. To that too. You know, so the path of God, I didn't expect it to be as difficult as it has been, right? Because mm -hmm. there is no honor when you're serving God. Only God honor you, you know? You're looking for some clapping of the hands, you're looking for somebody to honor you for delivering God's word to them, to warn them, to give them advice. You know, then if you're looking for any reward from that, you are going to fool yourself, you know. And so learning to serve God by serving humanity, learning to serve God by taking the time that's needed, patiently taking time that's needed to deliver something to a people 
who think they don't need it. This generation of young people think they don't need our advice as older elders, you know? They think they know already, so you have to be patient in your delivery. Exactly, right. You know, you so can't expect from them too much if they ain't been given enough. No. So. I like that, you're right though. You can't our, expect too much if they haven't been given enough. No, they've been bombarded with irrelevant knowledge, irrelevant information, so today, time demands that we confront them head on, you know what I'm saying? You gotta meet them where they at. They ain't coming to your church, they're not coming to the mosque. Right. You're gonna have to meet them in the trenches where they at. The so if you're not in, in the, the trap, trenches, in the gutter. You're Street. wasting your time, you know what I'm saying? Then you gotta make your conversation relevant. Mm -hmm. Right now, crime is the direct reflection of the lack of financial resources. So until we give our younger people access to financial resources, you cannot ask them to withdraw from the behavior. Exactly. Because there's a survival out here. Think about yourself asking young people, do the right thing, do the right thing. But then they do the right thing, but there's no financial reward and there's no accolades from it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's rewarding them, man, good job. Good job. They're not getting rewarded for the good. They're not getting accolades for the good. But when they go sell a pound of weed, move all kind of other type of illicit drugs, their partners give them accolades. You see what I'm saying? Man, right. you're doing it. You're putting that work in. You become the man in the street. Yes. Right. You get so, pants on the back and right, you become the man. So we got to find unique ways, man, to give our younger generation a new opportunity. And that's what the YP movement about. Young professionals is man, son, entrepreneurship. Huh? You know, I, I love what he got going, man. My son is young pro, man. I think a yeah, lot got so much for that young man. And then you got, I got nine boys, you know. And nine? Yeah, oh, man, okay. I'm blessed beyond measure. You got, I got daughters? A you got I daughter? got ten girls. Ten girls, nine boys. Yes. Man, this man got 19 kids. Yes. So, um, I'm blessed beyond measure oh, man. to have my children involved in the day-to-day -day works of reforming mm -hmm. this world. Meaning, they go among their peers. If you look at young pro, Mm -hmm. He's among the hip hop generation. Mm -hmm. For him to be in that sector and not curse, not use the N word to be accepted. Yeah. You see, that is profound. That's why I take my hat off to my son all the time. Exactly, man. I like you know, when I got into his music, at first, I, I'm not really into rap. I used to be. Now, this is my, I, my old school rap. I come up with no cash money, high boys. Yeah. Throwback rap. But the new stuff, when I got older, you don't really, you know, whatever, whatever. And I remember I heard the son stuff when I, when I first ran across it. I didn't want to hear it because of, you know, like, not into the, the same thing. Yeah, but he, he ended up giving me a CD. It was, it was years ago, like six years ago. He, he ended, I don't know if it was a son, but somebody just gave me the CD because I didn't want to buy it. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to sell it to him somewhere. So they, they gave it to me. And, <laughs> and I put it on back to that. And I was like, man, this is nice. Now, six, seven years later, I'm seeing, like, wow, that same dudes who gave me the CD that, that I was listening to. Yes. And I won't buy it because I thought it was just rap. You know, everybody say, you oh, know, my man. rap, my rap is the everything, everything, whatever. You know, I don't curse, but but still, it's still, you know. I'm man, high, you know? I'm blessed because my son's message can touch the hearts of the younger generation mm -hmm. in ways the older ones of us don't know how. Exactly. You know, so to give him that platform and now him being able to mature into it mm -hmm. is a blessing. You know, all of my sons are blessings to me because everything I wanted in a father figure that I didn't have when I was coming up, God gave me the permission to be able to become that to my sons. But I wouldn't even be that if I didn't have Minister Farrakhan to critique me, didn't have Farrakhan to, his message to be able to affect my mind where I have to take action against my own self. You know what I'm saying? I have to discipline my own self. I got, you know, if I want my sons to be different than this world, then I got to be different than this world. You know, so I, I sacrifice to be an example to them. At the end of the day, you are your kid's role model. Yes. Whether you want to believe them it or not. Be. I don't care who they look up, Superman, Beyonce, Jay-Z. They see you every day. They hear you every yeah. day. So they kind of... Come mimic you. Yeah, you they, know. You no. Know, so so, who they look up to, you first. You yes. and mom go first. So, man, that's a blessing. And, you know, my son who runs the landscaping department, young, young Sire. You know, so many things that mm -hmm. the young professionals do. You know, one of them is the community has to be consistently addressed to the needs of young people. So we have a program within our YP movement. It's called 35 cent a day. 35 cent a day. Well, you can say 33 cent a day. That's $5 every two weeks. That's $10 a month. So if you're willing to purchase something from young people, right? We have, uh, hold on, let me show you, bro. So we ask our people to do this. The, y, the 
shirt killing ain't gangster, right? This is a product for the young people and they keep the profit. So when you buy that shirt from the youngster that you see in front Walmart, in front Walgreens at the condo, then you just gave him an income. You know, say, well, I don't want to wear the shirt. Then, you know, well, we got air fresheners. You know what I'm saying? So this is their brand. So that you can buy an air freshener a month. That's five dollars a month. You just gave him an income. income. You know, he said, "Well, I, I don't like air fresheners." So when well, well, we came in multiple fashions, <laughs> you know, you, you, you can get you a pair of jogging pants. Oh yeah. You see what I'm saying? You get a pair of jogging pants from a youngster. It's called freedom. Freedom. By all righteous means. You see what I'm saying? If you don't teach the youngster how to do it the right way, you're wasting your time. Exactly. So my motive and my intent for the rest of this life I've been given is to teach and guide one million young people into entrepreneurship. Meaning, it's so simple. Give them a product and teach them how to exchange that product for a profit. Mm -hmm. Not the entrepreneurs. Exactly. Teach them how to basically run a customer base. Not the entrepreneurs. They already know this because they're out in the streets right now selling a, a gram of weed to each other. They're out right. there selling the community. So, right. so they, they, they know they this already, already. It just but it's just it, a different it, product. product. So you gotta stop buying just that gram of weed from them and buy their air fresheners, buy their t-shirts, buy their jogging pants, buy their incense, buy their CD. You see what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. Buy something from them. Stop asking them to do something different when you won't do something different. Black people and people in general you know, but my job is to address my kind. My people who, my youngsters get rejected from nine out of 10 times. I'm good, baby. No, you gotta take the time to ask him, what's that spout, young man? What's, where that money going at? That money's going in his pocket so that he can take care of his family. You know, so if we don't take the time to address young people, even if you want to buy shoes and candy with it, eat them the legal way. It's yes, cool. it it's don't okay. matter. What you do, I ask all exactly. the time the adults, what you do with yours? Go to exactly. the casino? If you're going to buy them Jordans, eat them the legal way. You know, they <laughs> always, well, they going to go do this with the money. I'm saying, stop judging them. As long as they work for it. They didn't steal it out your purse, mama. They didn't steal it out your wallet, daddy. They yeah. didn't go in the store and take it from nobody. Yeah. They learned how to make an honest living. Exactly. And that's the thing that we have to give to this generation where be real with them. Do you know there is no promise of jobs for those who graduate from college? So there are millions of people who graduate from college that walk around with tacit cases looking for jobs, right? Can't find them. So now we got a generation of young people who we still advocate, go to college, go to college. My thing is go get a trade, go get a trade. Because if we don't bring back the Carter G. Woodson mindset, if we don't bring back the mindsets of how to re-educate our youth because in the book by Carter G. Wilson, The Miseducation of the Negro, we miseducate. We got problems, you know, and until we see that we miseducated and we advocating the wrong things to our youth and advocating the wrong things to our generation, then what's wrong with us? Why we won't bite the bullet that we were wrong? We got to bite that bullet that if Sending our youngsters to college and getting in debt, going to college and the government don't ever forgive that debt but can't give them a job after they receive the degree. That is fraud. You know what I'm saying? For you to charge a person that amount of money for a degree but can't give them a quality of job after that or give them a guarantee of a job, that's fraud. So we got to push back, you know, on college and start pushing back into the area of the Voltec training. Bring back some of this training so that the youngster can rebuild America can go back into California that just burned down and helped rebuild California. But if we don't push our youngsters in that direction, mm -hmm. what are we doing? What all, what's wrong with us? So I think what's wrong with us is that we're not assessing our problem at hand correctly. Young people are not violent all the time. They only violent because they are not getting the answers when talked to respectfully. You know, when you look at a youngster and you immediately judge him before you even meet him is no different than how Caucasians judge black people before they meet black people. Same thing. You see what I'm saying? But you judging the youngster in the neighborhood instead of you getting acquainted with him, you're judging him. Exactly. So it's not fair to the younger generation. So now, man. So you think, you think it's kind of like the older generation folk? Yes. Is, uh... It's 100% the, the older generation folk. The, the saying is that the apple don't fall too far from the tree, you know, so this generation you're witnesses is the present generation of unaccepted reality because if we keep on throwing that false concept out there, they lost, 
you got to ask that bigger question. If something is lost, it was once in the possession of someone or somebody, right? Exactly. So if they lost, then who lost it? Who lost it? Then set responsibility. If they right. lost, then right. the parents and the elders of this generation lost, lost them. them. Then that's that's it. I never, I never saw it that way. You I, know what I'm saying? It's so powerful. I so, never saw it. Yes, we got to like accept that. that responsibility that if we blind, we ignorant, because if we were not ignorant and we were not blind, we would be producing a better reality for our youth. The evidence that the Arabs can come in our community and put and put into place business and then give their children jobs. The evidence that the Chinese, they can continue to bring businesses in our community to give their children jobs. You see what I'm saying? Exactly. So, you know, one of the things with the young professionals, I'm an advocate of getting our community businesses involved. I'm blessed by measure to have a lot of people involved. Lucky Johnson to be one of them. Oh, you yeah, know, my boy Lucky, oh man, yeah, that's man. my brother. I'm working with him on his at his compound. You know, the Black Rwanda. Mm -hmm. You know, where all black businesses are working with each other and for each other. You I know, gotta, I gotta get back over there by Lucky. Oh man, you gotta go over there, man. Oh, I, I've, been there. I've been there. I've been there. Um, you know, been tired we up. Work, and, yeah, we all working hard, but whenever you get free time, find a way over there to find a way to help my brother by all means. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the Black Panther of the East to me. Oh, yeah, you know yeah, what definitely, that's definitely. That's my man. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been lucky over 20 years, man. Yeah, brother. Great things are happening in the East, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just got to keep supporting the East and keep making ourselves visible. See, one of the things is adults and leaders have to come out of the verbalization and go into the actualization of work. Stop verbalizing your words to young people and show them how to practically apply those words. And also, I think sometimes, too, that... Some of the, the, the people in positions, they won't ever connect with the youngsters like what you're saying. You need people like you that been there, done that, you know. But their jobs are not to connect with the youngsters. Their job is to stay within office walls mm -hmm. to advocate the changes, not to come in the community and go about the changes. Right. You see what I'm saying? So we can't really judge them because they're paid to come in our community and gather data of what they could be done, but not to actually have the resources to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, the New Orleans East area need a mall. The New Orleans East area need a decent restaurant. So we can admire the councilman of this era who's advocating, yeah, but where's yeah. the resources? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We need the community to step up step and up. put forward finances from their own pocket. You know, if a thousand of us in the in New Orleans East area put up a thousand dollars, now we got a what? Hundred thousand dollars mm -hmm. to work with to put a restaurant here with the understanding I'm about to eat at my own restaurant, you know, 20 days out of the 30 days. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, but talking that. about it and not going forward is one of the things that's hurting us more than anything because we lip profess man talk 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 you know a lot of us want to go tomorrow to you go speak in the schools if you speak in the schools but can't meet them where they at why did you go speak in the school you see what i'm saying if you're not gonna go home to their reality they face with every day then you got to meet them where they at you want them not to be violent but you ain't got to go home to the violence they face with on the way home you see what I'm saying? You exactly. don't got to walk to the store and when they're on the way to the store, they, boy, they got beef with his outside today. Exactly. You're not there to see that part, but you want them to change it. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. To change something you face with every day. So you got to walk through the trenches with these youngsters. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to go. I always tell us adults, we so self-righteous and hypocritical. We don't even walk away from arguments. You see what I'm saying? When you see adults fighting and arguing with each other because one have not stepped up to become the bigger person, and walked away from the argument or walked away from the, the conflict, you argue, right? Right. But now you asking a younger generation to what? Walk away from it. <laughs> but you, know but you won't do it. So how are you expecting one who has little control of their emotion, right? Little control of their anger to control their anger problems. Most of the adults ain't on some of the medication these youngsters on. You ain't on these, these drugs that the youngsters on. You, you, you are witnessing more young people being prescribed all type of drugs to control their emotion, to control their what you call behavior, right? So now you're asking a child who's on this drug, control yourself. Or when he's on the drug, you ain't got to control him because the drug got him doped up where he is like a, a, a zombie. zombie. <laughs> so when does the child ever live a stable real life? When he not drugged up, and then when you witness him not drugged up, you say, well, I, I, I need him on his drug because I can't deal with him when he not on that drug because he get into stuff. 
you don't drug puppies when they bite your carpet and bite your damn furniture. You don't drug them. <laughs> you know what? You're not lying. You see what I'm saying? You don't yeah. drug none of the damn animals for their activity of running around the yard, the running in the house, biting your furniture. You don't drug them, but you'll drug your dog on child because some counselor took 45 to 30 minutes of his lifetime to say, well, I think he's EDD or I think he's ADD. One of them alpha best. You're right, though. You're see, right. But you didn't take no DNA from the child to study his DNA, to study anything of him that's biological. You took 45 minutes of his time and asked him certain questions, and now you diagnose the child and, and emotion. So, right. At certain ages, some kids are just, you know, just more hyper than other kids. And they grow out of it. Everybody move, operate different. I have. One of my sons was <laughs> off the wall. And they wanted us to put him on something, but we didn't. And guess what? He's now nah, he's normal. Yes. I mean, he never wasn't not normal. It just he was he, he little boy. He was hype. Yes. It, nothing, was yeah, was nothing was ever wrong, wrong with him. him. Nothing we wrong have with allowed him. people to come in and finance their lives on us exactly. allowing these people to diagnose our children with diagnoses that have no relevancy to biology. Meaning they are actually taking words stated from a child. And they're using those statements of that word to justify their means of prescribing drugs to a child. That is not fair. And mamas are accepting that because they want the social security I was check. About to say you're check. You see what I'm saying? So we are under multiple layers of ignorance, my brother. We are under multiple layers of attacks. You know, so this generation, man, when I read the Bible, it says, Suffer unto me the children, for such is the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. The children is the kingdom. Because we as adults have accepted and refused to fight this world way. We refuse to even stand up in this world today. The adults have become like um, the children of Israel when they were going through you know, the wilderness to get to the promised land. As the promised land was there for them, on their way to the promised land, they started murmuring at Moses, the leader of that time. That they didn't want to do the necessary works that was needed in the wilderness to get them through the process to get to the promised land. Some of them wanted to go back to Pharaoh. So they left Moses in the wilderness with the children. Ask the question, who went and got the promised land? The children, because they were fearless. They did not carry the attitude of their parents who were afraid to work. Who were afraid to go forward to the new area God had promised them over some false giants that was in the promised land. Our children are conquering those giants today. Our children today, how you say they're conquering it? Who control hip hop? The children of hip hop today got more followers than any pastor there is. Hey, you know what? You're absolutely right. You see what I'm saying? You're right. A there. pastor cannot fill a super dome full of you a right. pastor can't attract them so we got to get to the younger generation like minister farrakhan does the hip-hop generation and see if we can at least put and, some emphasis and, and, on and like, different like you said you got to get to where they at yes you know they're not coming to church so you got oh man it's you gotta over get with them where they at. you got to get them where they at church you got to meet them and religion has lost its flavor it's no longer good for the people it's lost its flavor to even get the people to think different, to get the people to see things different. Religious people are the most hypocritical people because they are the ones that accepted the responsibility to go after the dead people, to give the dead people life, but they won't go into the highways and byways among the people and give them the life, but then they just the people who need the doggone life. <laughs> How you do that? Where you do that at? Yeah, I have my thing about you know, so my thing is, I'm not judging the religious people. I'm just saying, let's get more active. Let's go among the people who need the light, who need the knowledge. Those who have already accepted that knowledge, you don't need to be talking to them to, because they're already informed. They already are now held responsible by God to handle themselves and their lives in a certain manner now. Right. But the one ain't never accepted responsibility. That young generation who don't want to affiliate with God because... They don't want to affiliate with God because their example of God came from their mom or their daddy. Was you a decent, godly person during your child's life? Or did you curse them out on your way to church? Or did you say, come to church, but come home acting like the heathen whom you told your child not to yeah, be? Exactly. You got to ask that question. And you, man, you 100% you right. And that what taunted you, you know? <laughs> I tell people all the time, man, they got people, you know, nothing person against people go to church. I go to church myself sometimes. But... I got people that I know go to church every day that I don't trust. You got people that I know they don't believe in God that I trust in my life. Man, <laughs> this work is so beautiful. That I, that I trust know, in my life. 
the one who you can trust with your life is the one that has not accepted anything from the God concept. Exactly. I know, so I know people not. that don't go to church, don't believe in God, but man, they're so real good people. I know church people, man, just what? <laughs> you know? A liar can't be a liar until you accept that you know the truth. Mm -hmm. The person who has not accepted the truth can regurgitate the lie not knowing it. But the person has who accepted the truth and understand what a lie is, yes. that person is held responsible to not continue that lie. The lie is just a lie. It could be standing on a condo. It needs a person to pick that lie pick up, up and carry, and carry that lie. You see what I'm saying? So when we lie to our children about false holidays, when we lie to our children about Santa Claus, Easter bunnies laying eggs, when you know, when we lie to our children about history, when we lie to our children about Jesus being white, when we lie to our children about ourselves not having flaws. You see, some of us, we hide our flaws and defects. Some of us, we hide our past from our children. And when up the people tell them about our past, it shock our children. Right. So you better hit like this. You hit, better tell your child your mouth, huh? from <laughs> your mouth. I mean, like you say, it's, it's certain ages you should know how to tell your kids certain things. You know, mm -hmm. you know, be three, I get it. He's seven, I get it. He's 13, 14, you could talk different. They understand it differently. Man, this generation, like you, you say, better start you, talking to them at three and four. Oh man, because I got this two boys, two girls, and I've not been on them. Mm -hmm. you know, especially teenage boys, you know. I, you, so you say you can't. You got to give them the real. If you don't give them real and give them a, um, give them the opportunity to pick a definite purpose in life, mm -hmm. we got to give each one of our children a, a, a understanding that they have to pick this definite purpose, and then we're gonna facilitate that. To be fathers, we have to make sure that our children go further. You know, sometimes brothers get upset with me because I say, man, we always want to talk about I'm the man, I'm the father, you know, but I always come right back at us and say, brother, if you the man and you the father, but you send your child to get a job from another man, then you need to question yourself. Because if you the man, how are you telling your child to go to another man for a job? That is not adequate. That is not mathematics. You got to realize that a man produces the avenue for which his children produces income. So... All right, sometimes some of us don't have that knowledge, so we have to send our children to people to get a job. Right. But you should be seeking that knowledge at all times. The greatest knowledge you ever can receive is the Honorable Elijah Muhammad knowledge. Do for self, off back. If you can take and go learn any trade, if you have held a job over four, five months, a year, two years, that means you qualified in the area which you held that job. That means you can do that particular thing for yourself. You qualify because if you wasn't qualified, you would have got fired. So you qualified to perform that particular duty. So you can render that duty to your people and get paid for that particular duty. So there's no excuse today, period, for none of us. Now, some of us can accept what I would say now would not be a job. I, I say what we should do is now partner. Mm -hmm. When you partner with a company and now you will have a partnership, but you get paid like it's a job, but you have ownership in the company. That's great enough. That is time that we start looking at things from that vantage point. That a thousand of us come together as partners and we buy your business and now you have a percentage in that company and you own it so now your children can take ownership when you pass. Sure. But for you working for a company that you have no ownership yeah. in yeah. is oxymoronic. Exactly. You know, something's wrong. Don't open your mouth. You know, to say anything if you're not teaching our younger generation that there won't be any jobs, brother, in the next five years. Really, there ain't no jobs now. Go look at the unemployment. So if there's no jobs, what are we to do? Exactly. Then there's, the, there's jobs, but the jobs they got, the job you really don't want. The jobs that they don't want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this. I gotta tell my youngsters, there ain't no job you don't want. The only job you don't want is selling drugs. The only job you don't want is pimping in your the woman who is the god of the universe you know when you look at the woman she has to be valued because she is the avenue by which we come into existence so if we don't change our attitude towards women if we don't change our demeanor towards women you know we really consider well i would say we should not even we deserve the whipping we get in humanity because of our disrespect towards women you know we got to change our attitude towards our women and all women in general because the woman is the second self of God, man. You know, when God created everything you see, the first thing he did was create that woman so that he can create the vessel that would house him over and over again. So we got to review who the woman is and do right by them.
if we don't, what our future look like? Because we have no future without proper respect for women. The they, wound of the woman, man. They reproduce. How? If you keep looking at her and she's something less than God. Treat her like you would treat God. All that talk you talk about, I love God. Treat the woman like you would treat God. Honor the woman like you would honor God. You know, there is a creator, but the woman is the second self to God. Other than that, give me another vessel by which man can recreate himself. There ain't none. <laughs> ain't, ain't so you better respect the wound that bore you. You better respect that triple darkness, the wound. And the black man talk crazy all the time. The black man is constantly trying to get back to where he come from. That's why he chased the vagina the way he does. That's triple darkness down there in that wound. You ever hear the white man talk about that black hole in space? Mm -hmm. That's triple darkness. <laughs> triple darkness. That's the wound of the woman. That's the only spot where you find triple darkness. And that's the space where God created us. You know, man, we are blessed humans at this present time, man. I would advise every human being, go study down the Buddha Elijah Muhammad so that you can learn the supreme wisdom of life. It's a difference when you study this man and what he's offering humanity. You know, we should automatically seek out the man who is always rejected without means. What have Donald Boy Elijah Muhammad done but reform black people in America at no cost? Mm -hmm. Look at what Minister Farrakhan has done with his life. You see what I'm saying? He has transformed so many lives. I have never met Minister Farrakhan in person, but this man has altered my life from the day I met him through audio and physical. You know, I've been on security where I was close to him, but I didn't get to meet him. Mm -hmm. But I love him so much that Man, I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> you know, that man actually saved my life. You know, God saved my life through Minister Farrakhan because the Farrakhan had not been in the highways and byways coming from city to city talking to black men, encouraging us to take responsibility, you know, and then demanding us to come to Washington, D.C., October 16, 1995, and to atone for our sins and our ways of life. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have never re reviewed my past. Like I reviewed it, you know, I wouldn't have never did it that way. And I wouldn't have never been able to be the father figure I am to my children today if I had not looked in the mirror and, and reflect and, off what he said. Yes, what it man asked me, you know. Self improvement is the basis for community development. You know, the greatest thing one of his students told me, Minister Harold Muhammad, he said, um, Don't stop hustling, son. Switch your product. Just change the hustle. Switch the product. I said, damn, I, you know, I thought it was something like, going to be a little something major, you know. Right. But I switched my product and I switched my attitude. And but you kept the same hustle. I, self, I kept the same hustle. Ain't nobody going to out-hustle me, period. You know, I'm a hustler. Um, I teach my youngest to hustle. Hustle is nothing but business. If you own a business, you got to push your business. You got to grind your business. Mm -hmm. So it's because of my youngsters, uh, being associated with the word hustle, I use that word as the word I want to advocate to them. That's called cool hustle. Because that's what the rappers keep talking about, hustle. Mm -hmm. Well, I give my youngsters products by which they could get in the same trenches the drug dealers in and hustle. Mm -hmm. The same avenues and hustle. The only difference, our product is different. Different, right, because hustle is a broad word. It don't oh, mean drugs. It don't mean drugs. <laughs> it it means mean, yeah, any product any that product. our people consume. Mm -hmm. Hustle here. You know what I'm saying? You're right, you're right. Hustle help. Hustle. Whatever. You know, we got our own. Let me see where you went at. We got our own toilet paper brand, man. Oh, you man. See that? It's right called here. Freedom. Let me see. It's called Freedom Toilet Paper. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so every time you buy a roll of this toilet paper from one of my, one of the youngsters for a dollar, you helping him free him from a life of crime, potential crime. So your, your brand of, your brand of clothes. The, the clothes. You, and when you buy, if you buy ten rolls of this from one of my youngsters, I'ma give you a free pair of jogging pants. Oh man. You see what I'm saying? The toilet paper called a dollar Freedom. a roll. We ask you to get ten rolls a month. If a hundred people agree to give one youngster. Uh, a commitment of 10 rolls a month that put in that youngster hand $1,000 to work with a month. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, right. So I teach them hustle, meaning your hustle is 100 customers. That's what I need you to have. You 100 customers that have committed to help you develop. Now you got to commit to that person who's willing to support you to live a decent and respected life, man. Don't ask them to support you if you're going to go out here and be rambunctious and, 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 and deceitful and evil. Don't ask them for that. See, I'm asking 
the city, the citizens of New Orleans to support you based on you doing the right exactly. thing. Exactly. Not on you taking your money and going to do something illicit with it. You can't. I don't want you in a strip club with, with your money. I don't want you out there buying drugs with your money. I want you to manage it so that you can use the game of. Then once the other youngsters see it, you know, it's chain reaction. The police, like you running from the police. I'm hustling to the police. Yes. The, people. the police have to <laughs> support my youth. City council need to support my youth. Every adult need to support young people. If you really want to see change, you change. support them, exactly. I promise you see the change. You see the change. You You're see right. what I'm saying? You're right. You're I know what caused me to be a criminal when I was a criminal. A lack of financial resources. Drug. So it forced me to drugs. It forced me to burglary. It forced me to crime. Because my mama couldn't provide the polos to me. She couldn't provide the polos to me. She couldn't provide the jabot. She couldn't provide the animal ballet shoes. So I had to get in the churches and go get it. So I went and got it the best way I knew how. And when a man offered me a new way, I took that route. I took Farrakhan and accepted what people used to call me all the time. Farrakhan brainwashed you. I said, I took every aspect of that man's mind. And I washed my mind with his mind to wash myself up, to clean myself up. So I accept being brainwashed by Farrakhan's theology. The theology of Elijah, brother. That you miss. What gives me my strength and my foundation is the Bible and the Holy Quran. When I look at the men and God that went into humanity to make it a better place, I gotta look at the men and women who accepted responsibility. Jesus accepted responsibility to raise the dead, right? Mm -hmm. All right, did he have 10,000 followers? Or he had 12? You're right. That's it. You see what I'm saying? So <laughs> you right. gotta understand. You're right. The work is not there, right? So if you look at that, when they when the persecution from the authorities came about what Jesus was teaching and saying, did those twelve stay? Hell no, they ran. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta understand that when a man approaches this world and his worry of life or the words coming out of his mouth alters this world, then you gotta understand people are not gonna like that man. Because one world is going out and one world is coming, coming in. in. Yeah, right. So this is the establishment of the kingdom of God. Those of us who accept Minister Farrakhan and Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we put the sun, moon, and star on our shoulder, man. We, we are the ushers in of a new world. So all the rejectors, all the deniers, if you could show me a proven, more successful route outside of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I'd be open. But outside of that, I got to use what he has given me because I have not used anything but his teachings. Now, I have read a lot of books. You know, being illiterate for 23 years of my life um, and learning how to read, reading is my addiction. I love to read. So right now, by God's permission, I'm about 1,500 to 1,800 books strong. In my, ooh, ooh. 1,500, man. Don't embarrass me like that, man. No, but listen <laughs> to me. I had to study a man who had to study. The man who came to save us and give us the blueprint to heaven studied 42 years, brother, to come and to teach one man for three and a half years. So whatever he studied for 42 years mm -hmm. to give to a man to study, you know, in three and a half years, yes. who am I not to study? You see what I'm saying? There's a library, the Congress Library, which is open to all of us. There are books in there that can free your mind that they refused to publish again that was written in the early 1800s. Yeah, I got a, you know, I got a homeboy tell me about that. Brother, listen to me. Books that the, I read, they, don't, brother, uh, they publish. won't publish them because they're, the, they're, they're the actually blueprint to freeing the minds of the people outside of the misery of beliefs, mm -hmm. you know, outside of the waiting. See, we are being trained to wait. The school system is, wait, is teaching you to wait. You're sitting in a chair waiting for permission. Wait, 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 wait. You see what I'm saying? You're going to vote to wait for the outcome. You wait, 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 wait. That is a process of enslavement. Stop waiting and go get the results you asking these people to do for you. The wait over. Oh, God coming. That's over. God came. Why should I wait for him to come when he came? If your house got electrical problems and the light's out, and you keep telling me an electric person came, <laughs> but the light's still out, the evidence he didn't come because the light's still out. Mm -hmm. If he came, the lights would be on. Well, the lights are on in the minds of black men in America because a man came. And that man came and turned the lights on by giving light to one man, Elijah Muhammad. 
that one man took that light that that man gave him and he lit thousands of men and that man is rejected in this world today he's not on the tongues of black men today it offends me when I meet brothers and, and you mention Honorable Elijah Muhammad and they can't even give you history on him. You see what I'm saying? But they could give you the history of Martin Luther King. No offense to my brother. They could give you the history of, of Malcolm X. No offense to my brother. But why can't they give you the history on the man that produced Malcolm? Nope. Right. You see what I'm saying? Someone wanted you to stop at Malcolm. You need to be going to the tree that produced Malcolm. If you want to be a Malcolm. No, they want to wear a Malcolm hat. You know what I'm saying? They won't be on Malcolm's shirt, but they don't want to get in the trenches right. where Malcolm was at. Go look at Malcolm's speeches. He was in the god doggone hood with a stage talking mm -hmm. to the people in the hood. He wasn't over YouTube. We heavy, right. We heavy YouTube. <laughs> he would, that was speeches every day. That. Yeah, he was in the hood, brother. Mm -hmm. My thing is, please, black people, please, white people, Wake up and do not allow yourself to buy into the wall that is being planned. Mm -hmm. You know, you do. You know, there's a, a race wall plan too, though. Oh yeah, it's, you know that. We see it every day. We <laughs> can't buy into. It, you know, all white people are not our problem because they have problems of their own too. Mm -hmm. You know, you talking about white? Why, 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 why the white man? I said, listen to me. You want to see a ghetto? Just ride to any urban white trailer park and the same thing that go same on in thing. the project same thing go on among white people yep. same ignorance that's in the project is ignorance among white people there are a particular group of people called the 10 percent blood suckers of the poor who take advantage of white and black people mm -hmm. the Indians not white why they still on the damn reservation you see what I'm saying <laughs> so the thing is the people that control white, black, brown, and all people who benefit off the chaos and confusion of all people. Oh, it's a black and white thing, man. Go in that pharmacy and see if this white folks or this black folks is getting the medication. He's, he's, you see what I'm saying? He's right. <laughs> we Everybody. do have a black issue and a black problem. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to address black people first because that's yeah. the ones I encounter first. first. Exactly. But I will not deny God's wisdom to no man. Black, white, brown doesn't matter mm -hmm. you know this is the day where everybody get it you know I tell my sons all the time all my little young rapper to be you know because I'm lyrically gifted I don't you know I, and that's another thing I'm gonna leave you with a copy but make sure you stop by all my youngsters and get this here <laughs> this is my killing ain't gangster mixtape yes killing I dropped my gangsta. own mixtape that's what I'm talking about you know man. my gang, gangsta. my mixtape got 21 tracks of my mind and lyrical content and uh, you will learn a lot about me and what made me and where my ambition and my determination comes from you could pick this mixtape up from any youngster within the community from Miss You all the way man we in Laplace we in Baton Rouge we crossed the canal we all across the river we ain't playing <laughs> Amen. You know what I'm saying? And any youngster that want an opportunity that's in a financial desperate situation and need access to some getting some money, inbox me, Brother Roosevelt, YP underscore movement, Instagram, or go on Facebook, Roosevelt Jones. Inbox me. But if you're lazy, don't inbox me. <laughs> If you're a procrastinator, no, no. don't inbox me. You're looking for open access? Yes. If you if you're willing <laughs> to go beyond the limitation of your thinking and do something different, then you inbox me because the opportunity is gonna demand you to do something different. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you if you can't accept rejection, don't inbox me. Cause you're gonna get ten no's in one year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The thing, man. brother, I thank you. Man, I appreciate this, man. You Definitely, know, man. And Thank you. Like I said, once again, man, thank you for taking time out your schedule, man, to, you know, take this ride with me, chop man, it up, man. I want to. Like, bring some of my audience, man. Well, Definitely, man. The audience, you know, um, we all, I want every person who hearing us mm -hmm. to accept responsibility that the harvest is right, the laborers are few. The harvest is young people. They ripe. But if you don't go out and pick them from mm -hmm. the block, if you don't go out and pick them from the trenches, mm -hmm. And they go rotten. That's yep. your responsibility. Yep. You see what I'm saying? So we can't blame them 
the box for B and M. Yeah, don't <laughs> blame the condition of the clay. Blame the pl the p the potter, right? The man who shaped them, right? The person who shaped them. If they're in a horrible condition, who shaped them? PlayStation. Hmm. That's where we allow our children to spend a lot of time. We gotta change it, you know. So support the YP movement, young professionals, off back. We gonna stay consistent, you YRP know. YP and killing ourselves ain't, ain't gangster. gangster. But then we got some other slogans that we ask our people to um, get to, you know, because mm -hmm. we got one called winning. winning. Winners never quit. But winners Losers never quit. Losers never win. Mm -hmm. You know, we got um, so many different quotes, brother, that is a blessing. We got one called wisdom. You know, wisdom is knowledge applied wisely on a mathematical basis. If the knowledge don't add up, then it won't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. But then it won't make sense because you got to apply the mental sense to get to the physical sense. If you're a good applier of your mental sense, then you automatically get some financial sense. But if you ain't applying the mental sense, you know, and then finding wise ways, just because you possess the knowledge don't make you wise. Wisdom is applying the knowledge in a mathematical mm -hmm. way. You see what I'm saying? Applying. Having knowledge is not right. going to work. It's like just being smart. Yes. Don't really oh, man, I don't apply mess with the, smart yeah, dummies. Yeah. There you go, smart demons. You know, Minister Farrakhan call us intellectual pigs. Because hmm. intellectual, we consume books, we read books, we read lectures, we listen to, you know, self-help books and self-help people, right? But, then, then but we don't never go out to apply right. them and then we become pig-headed. Like the pig, the pig is only fat because he don't have a digestive way to let the food eat in, so he get fat and so the pus come out of his feet. You know what I'm saying? He don't have the digestive system by which his food can digest right mm -hmm. so it comes through his peak that pus right so that's why we don't eat that thing but a person who digests knowledge consistently knowledge consistently but you can't find him applying that knowledge they become like the pig the conversation is like pus they never apply none of it because they got opinions on everything everything you see what i'm saying i know it all and you go and apply anything they say and everybody and you're gonna get some pus <laughs> <laughs> Man, but thank you again, man. I appreciate it, oh, man. man. Once again, man. Yes, brother. Thank you yep, for the opportunity. Oh, I appreciate you it, You know, man. Killing ourselves ain't gangster. Yes. <laughs> thank you, man.